Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. So on my blog, I show you how I made my fortune in real estate. Starting at 19 years old, millionaire at 28. Uh, so I got a book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. Yeah, it's available in Audible, uh, paperback and Kindle. It's been a bestseller on Kindle. Uh, and it's already taken off crazy on the Audible book. Today, you know, I'm going to talk about Meet Kevin. Look, Kevin is a, a talented YouTuber. Uh, you know, he's been a real estate agent. I guess he's been a financial officer of some sort. He's had various jobs. Where I clash with him is I don't like that he extrapolates the experience that he has. I'm qualified to teach people how to invest in real estate. I think he's actually the least qualified in that of many of the people that I've seen. And the reason I say that is, and I don't mean to be so harsh on him, but I mean, I got to be straight with you. You know, he sells a course on buying real estate. But you got to consider the, the experience of somebody that's that's making these claims. So, look, he, he did this video, uh, should you buy a duplex or a house? He comes to a wrong conclusion at the end of it. And so I thought, well, this is a good way to kind of highlight what I'm talking about. Listen, one thing Kevin is definitely qualified to teach you about is how to make money on YouTube. He, he is uh, phenomenal. He's absolutely phenomenal at it. But I just don't think somebody should extrapolate. They have bought millions of dollars worth of real estate, haven't really profited on it, just have accumulated it with their, their income. So let, let's get on with it and uh, I'll explain more. Should you buy a duplex or a house? Okay. And so what he does, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because he kind of belabors stuff a little longer than I can stand. The bottom line is he's comparing about uh, the purchase of a house as opposed to a duplex that are about the same price. I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about. In fact, if you have not yet seen my video on how to retire in 10 years, starting with $100, make sure to watch that video because it'll show you the difference on the importance of cash flow now versus cash flow later. Yeah, like I say, this is a guy who's telling you, uh, he's made a video on how to retire on $100, okay? This is a guy that makes six to $10,000 a day on YouTube. That's why it's so silly. If you're going to take any advice from Kevin, watch him. If you want to be a YouTuber and know how to make money on YouTube, watch him. He's really, really good. But his advice as, a, uh, as somebody to invest that's going to show you how to make money, it's silly because the guy makes like a million dollars a year or more. Some people have bad habits. Like, you know, I like real expensive wine, you know, and I drink it and I waste money when you consider drink a $200 bottle of wine, you know, a couple times a week. You know, it's, it's expensive, right? It's kind of a waste, but I enjoy it and I can afford it and I can pay for it. Well, likewise, he can afford to invest as poorly as he does, but it's because of the job he has that allows him to do it. So let me just show you a little bit about that. So look, here's Kevin. In this video, he's saying, how much YouTube paid me this summer? So take a look at this. If you can see right here, this is a graph on the, on the money he makes. $10,000. That's just one day. That is awesome. I mean, I would have loved to have made that kind of money when I was young. <laughs> Let's listen to him a little bit. Day, and then there's a 5,900 day. And I can only imagine, I mean, my, my channel gets like maybe 13, 14 million views a month. I can only imagine the channels that are getting way more views per month. Uh, what kind of revenue they may be looking at. But see, here's a low day at 3,600 per day. Oh, here's another low day, bad day at 3,200. You know, kind of looking at the lows, there were a couple lows there. The other lows are like the fives. Looking at the highs, they're over 10K, 9 to 10K. Uh, and it's absolutely incredible. And now let me go ahead and take away the number that's kind of like right here. So I appreciate his honesty that he shares how much money he makes on YouTube. It's very inspirational. He went through there. He showed you on average 8, 9, 10, 6,000, 3,200 on a low per day. So here's the time frame. You see it's June 14th to September 26th. That's what's applied. Let's just get rid of this right here. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that like... I don't get it. It's it's absolutely mind blowing. Uh, so he made seven hundred and forty two thousand dollars over a summer. Now I think a lot of this has to do with stimulus checks. If if you look, well, I can tell you about ninety percent of everything he's talked about has been stimulus from the uh, the fallout from the pandemic that we had. So he made a ton of money this summer on that. This is here is what bothers me a little bit right here. Okay, down here, he, these were programs he started out in the beginning. He he's, he still has them available. Real estate investing. Now this is the one that I I just think he's got the least uh, qualifications to do. Right here, if you see over my shoulder, real estate investing. Okay, real estate investing. 
That's another program. I mean, I understand he's bought property, but anybody can buy property when you got money. And you can overpay for your property. Uh, just ask Grant Cardone uh, if, if, you have, if you have income coming in. So you can see with this kind of income, you know, this, he's made well over a million dollars this year. He made 742000 it looks like, in three months. So let's get back to his advice on investing, and I'll tell you why it's so flawed. Let's, let's watch. And as well as give you steps for retiring early. But for now, we're going to try to evaluate what's better this house or this duplex. At a glance, we can make a lot of assumptions, but we don't know anything concrete. And here is the most important thing that a pro is going to look at in determining which one of these is a better deal that is going to make you more money. And that's called the value factor. See, a house is valued based on how much the house is worth relative to other houses in the neighborhood. That's true. A duplex is valued based on its income, generally. Sometimes that's true too. comparable sales for comps, but typically you're looking at income here, and here you're looking at comps based on what other similar properties... Houses are an emotional purchase, so you can't really base them on income. People buy them based on where they are, near their kids, near a school. In other words, the things that drive houses up in value really have nothing to do with income producing prop. Multifamily, duplex, commercial, I own a lot of this stuff. I've been doing it for 40 years. Where he's gonna go wrong here is in, in this program, but I'm gonna go and speed it up. He's talking pretty slow. More, let's watch this. Before selling for. Now, these tend to stick together like rubber bands. And so when house prices go up, rent prices tend to go up and they tend to drive up duplexes. And in general, these have the same rate of return. I mean, $300,000 invested, $500 a month in cash flow, the rate of return is the same. But the value factor is the difference. And so how do we figure out what the value factor is? And is that gonna give us a slam dunk answer? Well, let's get into the value factor and you'll get that answer. So let's take a look at this house and say that this house is in a $300,000 neighborhood. If this house is $300,000 and you're buying the house in a $300,000 neighborhood, which means other properties with a similar floor plan and similar square footage, similar age, similar lot size, not next to yabots like busy streets or whatever. If this house is just like the other ones, they're all selling for 300K and this one's selling for 300K, then this property has a zero value factor. We'll call that VF, zero for the value factor. However, what if this house is actually in a $400,000 neighborhood and it just needs $10,000 of new paint and carpet? Well, in that example, you create $90,000 of value by putting $10,000 into the property. Now, I know I'm oversimplifying here, but the point is to teach you the difference between houses and multifamily in terms of which you should get started with buying, right? So with this example, you buy a $300,000 house in a $400,000 neighborhood, you put $10,000 in for painting carpet, and now it's worth $400,000. Well, you just created $90,000 as your value factor. So you have a $90,000 value factor buying a house and you're spending $10,000 in this example. Okay, well, $90,000 and the $500 in cash flow, that's pretty cool. Let's now look at the duplex. If we go to the duplex, and this duplex is a market value duplex, the rents are at fair market value, the properties at fair market value, well, then that duplex has a value factor of zero. That makes this house a way better deal. You're getting the similar rate of return because you're in the same market. You know, we're not comparing North Carolina to let's say Southern California. We're assuming that these two properties are in the same market. So same rate of return, but wait a minute, you got $90,000 of value over here, which means worst case scenario, property values fell. Over here, you're upside down. Over here, you've got a big fat cushion. $90,000 on a $300,000 property, that's a nice cushion that you don't have over here. So here you're actually at a higher risk of being over leveraged than you are here, especially since you could put 3.5% down. And since you're putting 3.5% down, well, heck over here, you can get rid of mortgage insurance really fast, but you can't get rid of mortgage insurance really fast over here unless you come up with a bunch of extra cash. So. Let's do another scenario though with this duplex. So let's go ahead and erase the zero so we don't have an oddly sized zero again like we did there on the left. And while I do that, make sure to go down to the link down below and get yourself life insurance, which you can sign up for in as little as five minutes. This is what he's good at, selling life insurance. Deposit just $100 with Wheel and you get two free stocks worth up to $1,400. Um, yeah. yeah. It really helps you learn the psychology of investing, not just basics like dividends and cash flow. Investing goes way deeper. Okay, duplex. Let's say that this duplex has two units, right? Let's say the units are renting for $750 each. So each unit is renting for $750. And this is going to give us an annual rent. So first of all, if we add these together, we've got $1,500. If we multiply by 12, we get $18,000 of annual rent. That's the gross rent before expenses and all that. And this great place is selling for $300,000. Well, if I do $300,000 divided by 18,000, I get- Okay, you just said that's the gross rent. Listen, if that's the gross rent, this isn't worth $300,000 right off the bat. It's not worth it but let's keep listening. About 16.67. This figure right here is known as your gross rent multiplier. Don't really worry about that. Just know that it's 16.67. Yeah, listen, gross rent multiplier is worthless, but go ahead. Now, if this property was a fair market value property and the rents are $750 and you can't raise the rents, the value factor is zero. That's bad. But you're a savvy investor. You're not a noob. The noob just looks at $500 in cash flow. Woohoo! Look at my cash on cash return. Doesn't matter. No value. Value is what matters. <coughs> The pro looks at this and says, okay, so the rents are $750, but I can come in here and go and raise these rents to $1,000. So now my rents are $1,000 per unit, which actually means I'm now getting $24,000 
if I raise these rents to $1,000, the market value. And let's say I have to spend $10,000 on the units, you know, a little bit of paint and carpet, again, oversimplifying, but I put $10,000 in, the same $10,000 that I put in over here, put the $10,000 in, now I can raise the rents to $1,000 per unit, now my annual gross rent is $24,000. Well, $24,000 times the same gross rent multiplier, assuming that this is a market value gross rent multiplier, so you can look at other units to see what kind of gross rent multiplier they're selling for by looking at their rents and their sales prices, and you just divide. And anyway, now let's say this market, wherever you're buying, has a gross rent multiplier of uh, 16.67. 24,000 times 16.67 actually leaves me with a property that's worth $400,800. Ah, well, this is interesting because look at what we just did. We just created value. See, mm. we created... Okay, you did create value, but the problem is, is that in this scenario, he way overpaid for this property in the first place. So let me explain. I'm a pro, okay? He, he likes to refer to himself as a pro and other people as noobs. He's a noob, but he's a rich noob, okay? So he can afford to invest so poorly. So you've got 18000 okay? That was the gross rents, okay? I would, at a minimum, I would, it, it, if this was the net, 18000 on 300000 that would be, uh, that would be 6%. That cap rate is 6% on the gross, on the gross. We, you want a 6% net minimum, minimum. I wouldn't even accept that. I like 10%. Otherwise, Otherwise, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't be a good investor if I bought it. That's going broke slowly. But this is silly anyways. It's just because it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. But I'll explain why. So let's talk about this. This duplex, he said, was $300,000. Right here. There's the duplex. Here's the three hundred k that he paid for it. And that was with an $18,000 gross right here. Okay, remember? GRM, gross rent multiplier. Now, he, okay, he, he bumped the prices up two fifty dollars a piece. And he got $1,000 on each side, added another $500 a month income. Okay, that got him to the 24,000 right here. He goes back to this gross rent, rent multiplier again, and now he claims based on this, you've got $400,000 in value. Okay, again, because he's talking about the gross, he's not factoring in taxes, property tax. Okay, well, that's a significant expense. Let's go back to the 300,000. At 300,000, if he's paying one and a quarter, uh, Property tax, that's uh, $3,750, just round off, say $4,000. So really, in that situation, this would be $14,000, okay? I'm subtracting the property tax, which is going to give you uh, the net. I'll just write right over this, net, okay? So now he's got $14,000 net. So with $14,000 income, the way you determine when your cap rate, you take your net operating income and you divide that by the purchase price. So in this case, 300,000. So on 300,000, uh, so we got, uh, let's see, 14,000 here. This is a four and a half percent return on the 300K. That's 4.5. Okay. Now in this situation, he's saying that he by raising it 500 bucks, uh, that's a 4.5% return. That is horrible. So let me tell you what that property would be worth at a maximum, I should say. All right, so with that 300000 only getting a 4.5% return, that's like 25% that's like under the, the minimum you'd want to get. You would have to get uh, 6% times 300 would be your 18, but he was doing it on the gross. Come over here, just do, just do 400,000 times 0 0.06, and you're going to have 24,000, okay? That would be the minimum net return you'd want to have. And here, that's what he's got under with the gross, with the gross, right? The gross rent multiplier. So again, uh, based on 400,000, you know, just, just take off one and a half, that's 6,000 bucks off the year that's going to be 18,000 and now he's getting four and a half percent on this as well uh so look four and a half percent is a terrible return a, a ridiculous return let's keep let's keep watching value in the house by buying a fixer upper buying something that needed some love we bought it in the wedge this the house is actually called a condition wedge so i call uh, it the C this wedge the bs wedge scenario, because there are four types of wedge deals you can get and we call that the core method c is for the house well, this duplex scenario, we actually got a wedge rent. That's the R scenario, because we were able to raise the rent, put a little bit of money in, and wait a minute, we just created value here. But how much value did we just create? Well, we actually just created $90,800. Folks, if you want to buy real estate and you want cash flow and all you care about is that number right here, you don't care about growing your value factor, we're better off buying AT&T dividend stock because you'll get 7% and the hope for appreciation and you don't have to worry about anything else. 
That's the newbie way to buy real estate. The pro looks at their market and says, how can I get cash flow and value? Value is what makes a deal great. In this example, the duplex is the better deal. <laughs> by $800, you know, there are other factors that now go in. You know, there's a headache factor. Over First of all, here's why that's not true. Uh, and let's go back to, all right. Look, if you bought this house, put in 10 grand, like he said here, and all of a sudden you created 90,000, this is a no brainer. Okay. Now, if this one, you had to go through the trouble and steps of raising the rents in order to make it worth 90,000. Okay. Then you could say that they're kind of an equal deal, but really it's not so because the numbers are preposterous on this. 400,000 for a $24,000 net is ridiculous. I, I mean, this is, I mean, for a $24,000 gross, he, he's going to end up paying roughly uh, six grand a, a year taxes. So this is really 18,000 net, okay? And, and really, I'm being generous because that's not even figuring other maintenance. So $18,000 net, never is it going to be 400 grand. No, no good investor would ever make that purchase ever. So it, 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 Kevin thinks this is the best deal. Okay. No, this is the best deal right here because you bought it, you put in 10 grand, you flipped it and you make yourself $90,000. This one, uh, to make $90,000, even using his math to raise the rents, You've got to convince somebody to take a four and a half percent return on investment, which is extremely low. So look, in conclusion, I'm just saying, if you make this kind of money right here, if you make six to ten thousand dollars a day, you are seven hundred and forty two thousand dollars in a summer. Yes, you can buy millions of dollars of real estate. You know, every year you can buy, you can buy, you can buy a couple million dollars. In fact, if you look at Kevin's history, he'll show you that, oh, look, I'm worth 5 million, you know, this year. Oh, now I'm worth 8 million. Now I'm worth 10 million. Again, the reason he's worth that is because he is making that much from his job. It has nothing to do with the investments. I'm talking about real estate. In conclusion, I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, if you want to learn about real estate, you can see up there, wake up and smell the real estate been a bestseller on Kindle. Uh, buy the book. It's the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. Hey, thanks for watching.